Hey Tube, Mr. Lenary 4.9 here. Today I'm going to be doing a how to video on uh, how I make my uh, lamppost for stations, yards, villages, whatever. It's all exactly the same, just one stage difference. So, uh, yeah, well, a few things you'll need to get. Um, you'll need to get some paint brushes of some form. I've got a few different sizes here. Um, you also need paint. Uh, I use this here, um, which is uh, Humbrol Acrylics um, Rail Color or um, RC. 415. Um, you can also use black or, or green or yellow or whatever colour you want, um, but I'm going brown. Any place where I want it to look a bit more used, um, I'm going to add a little bit of this dark green to it as well. So put that out of the way for a second. Uh, you also need some quick drying glue like this stuff. This dries in about two minutes, maybe it'll go will start to dry hard enough. Uh, sharp craft knife is always good to have. Um, tweezers, not necessary but useful to have. And a screwdriver, it's quite small uh, at the end like this, but if, it, if it's got a flat bottom like this one so it can stand upright, uh, that makes it even more useful. Uh, the final thing you'll need is um, straws. Um, I got 150 here for 75 pence, um, which is about probably 80 cents if you're in America. Um, so really cheap, 150. Um, as well as that, uh, you'll need a bulb like this. This is 3mm by 6mm, uh, I think they call it grain of wheat bulb. Um, two wires, very simple, it goes no matter which way around they go, positive, negative, negative, positive, they work absolutely fine. <coughs> so first thing you need to do is, well, get a straw out, which is amazingly, there we go. Now the straw needs to be this sort of style with the um, flexible head to it. Um, well, yeah, you, you really do need the flexible head or else this, this sort of uh, doesn't really work. So the first thing you want to do is pull it out straight, go up to the first groove. Um, if when you pull it out straight and look at the straw, you'll see what I mean when I say groove. And just cut along the first one as neatly as possible, like so. You don't need that end of the straw anymore. Uh, if you've got a rough edge, just knead it up. Now the next thing you need to do is take it over to the uh, layout. Um, hopefully you should have already drilled a hole where you want the lamp to sit. Um, then bend it over the end like that. So it goes right back on itself. Um, stick it in the layout. I'm just going to do that now to get the correct height. I find a good way to do it is just to bend the straw like that. There we go. I've got the height now. Um, and then you need to add about, uh, well, between 5 and 10 mil, so you've got something to stick into the baseboard. Um, so this doesn't have to be very accurate, um, but as always, check twice, cut once. Great. Sorry about that, maybe I should have measured it out before I cut it. at all. Now if you want it to be a station yard light you might just leave that long or um, if you want it to be like um, on the ground you cut it really short. Um, that's how you make different lights. Right. So um, yeah if you want to have um, sort of different areas just cut this length of straw to different lengths wherever you need. And now the next thing I do is I paint it. Um, this is where that screwdriver comes on. Um, stick it on the end there, stick your thumb there and then you're able to paint this without having to handle it all the time. And once you've finished, you can just stick it upright and it will dry nicely. So, let's unfill actually. Um, with these paints here, you have to do, shake them for a few seconds and then, um, well, usually give them a stir, but um, doesn't matter. So I'm doing that. I'm just going to say, um, I'm actually doing an update video today just after this one. That will be released, well, I'll put that on YouTube maybe three days after this one, four days after this one comes out. Um, I did go to the Taunton Rail Fair. Um, I didn't buy much though, that's why I haven't really done a video on it at all. Um, so yeah, I've got that little bit coming up. I'll mention about that in the update. I've also got a couple of how to, a couple more how-to videos coming out as well, um, sort of in a little while, which will hopefully, uh, well, hopefully you'll find that useful. Um, but if you just follow my channel, um, then I'll put what they are in the title. Um, painting this. Um, I always paint it with this already bent over um, as far as it can go um, only because then the paint acts, acts a bit like glue which is nice um, so yeah so uh, also what's happening well um, I've got a few 
well, I'd like to buy a couple of locos and stuff. Um, I've been doing a bit of research on um, the Somerset and Dorset Railway. Um, I will be doing a history lesson for anyone's interested. Well, I don't know what I'm going to call it. Uh, but basically, it'll just be a history lesson on it, I don't know, 10, 15 minute video. Um, and then that will explain a little bit more about what's happening sort of later on in my videos, what locos I might be buying, um, things like that. I know not that won't, well, interest many people. Um, so if, if that video comes up and you just don't want to watch it, then by all means don't watch it. Um, but once that video is over, I will be probably buying a new loco. Um, I don't know if it's going to be brand new or if I maybe pick up one second hand. Um, but I'll mention more about that in that video. Uh, the regular updates, as I said, I'm doing an update after this one, which will be coming out, as I said, four days, three or four days afterwards, um, which will hopefully um, be quite good. And I'm going to start work on, um, well, a little bit more detail um, in a couple of areas, and I'm also hopefully going to start work on the forest uh, near my turntable, which is actually behind the camera, as well as um, hopefully do a hill. Um, which is just off screen past the drawers you can see there um, Hopefully I'll be getting all that done. So um, yeah, if you want to check out my channel um, Hit the subscribe button you'll be able to follow me So yeah, so now that's all painted the next thing you do is to obviously let that dry um, So while that's drying um, You can do this which is just I'm just trying to clear off a little bit of glue off the uh, I've already used this bold ones. It's not a brand new one. So there we go, got it. Um, now the next thing you need to do is you need to feed this up through here um, once this is all dry and then um, glue it in place. Now um, the way I feed it is I bend the end like that, um, I think that works best, and then just stick it up on the inside, feed it all the way through until it comes out the end. Um, now I'm not going to do that while that's drying, I'm going to stop the camera, let that dry and then I'll restart it again. So the, uh, yeah, the, uh, well, it's almost dried now, it's good enough. Um, so the next thing you need to do is actually tech and make sure that the bulb works before you um, push it on the inside. So on a well, on the uh, what was it the uh, R nine six five controller? Just simple enough to touch in the end, and yep, as you can see, ish, my hands in the way, and there you go. I've got a nice working bulb. <coughs> so what you have to do, as I said, is bend over the end um, like so. If I can get it on. Off, remove the straw. Now you may have to um, put uh, another, well, some paint in just a few areas where it may have sort of rubbed off a bit, but as a matter, sorry about the noise in the background. So feed it all the way up and through until it comes out the end, like so. There we go. Um, so now it's come out the end, um, you can see it by my hand, there you go, um, it's now come out the end, um, so the next thing you should do is take the glue, as I said, this is why you really want quick sort of setting glue, only because this bit will take a little while otherwise, um, and just put the glue in, money's put out a bit further, like that. and you stick the glue in, So, I actually put a bit of glue in on the top and on the bottom of it just to make sure I get a good fix. And then this is why I keep mentioning quick, um, um, quick drying glue. You want to push this back in a little way. Make sure the ends bend over far enough. So yeah, you want to push this one back in. Let's make sure you get a good seal on the top. You want to push this the wires down at the same time as pushing the bulb back in um, then this way it helps the bulb sort of well it helps the bulb sort of stick a bit more central in the um, in the uh, plastic so we're just going to let this dry um, and then I will I won't actually show you but I'll just quickly explain how um, how it attaches onto the track See so then I've now finished gluing and painting this it's all ready to be installed to the baseboard so that's what I'm just going to do now and I've just drilled a hole here a 5.5 mil drill is usually big enough for my straws but depending on what straws you get depending on how big the hole should be 
Uh, and all I do is try and feed it straight down the hole. Like so. Like that. There we go, right, it's come out the bottom now. Put it at about the right angle. Now this one here I want to face inwards a bit more. These two here. Um, these two here I wanted to face towards each other, whereas this one here I want to face in towards the middle. Uh, it's about the right angle there. It's sitting upright that way. Not quite upright that way, but that could be easily sorted just by lifting it up a bit. And uh, there we go. Now the next thing I do is um, put glue in this hole. Usually the quick drying stuff, the PVO would work fine. I then find a weight or something I can just rest next to it to make sure it sits upright. And then I walk away and leave it. Uh, until it's glued, but I need to uh, solder on a wire, I think, to attach down. So we're going to go underneath the base one and have a look. Now, then, the wires are these two here, and the bus wires I need to attach to are these here. So uh, the black is actually long enough, but the red one needs to be soldered. Um, now, I would usually actually, I'm gonna uh, take this out, solder it before I glue it back in, but you get the base idea. I'm just going to show you this one here, which is already done. Um, you can see that the red, uh, well, the positive will go into one side, the negative into the other side, and then that ends up coming back round to my controller, to my switch here. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> there we go. Which ends up coming back to my my little switch here, and when I flick it, all the lights turn on and off. So that's how I do my soldering. I'll be doing a little video on how I wired up my layout because it's not exactly conventional. Um, but I think it's quite a cheap way of doing it. So, uh, yes, get back to the light. Uh, that there is a little tutorial on how I make my um, station lights. Uh, as I said, there's only one thing you do differently if you want to have a different sort of light, um, and that is you just make the light taller um, if you want to move the yard light. Um, if you want to be a bit more of a street light or something, then um, I would just carefully build a little cardboard something and just stick it on the top. Um, a cardboard, maybe if you really want to, you can add tin foil or something to the inside to reflect the light straight down. But in my case, I just wanted to go everywhere. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Um, I just want to say thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions about this, then please ask. Um, yeah, then please ask me and I will uh, hopefully answer as quickly as possible. And finally, please just check out my channel. Um, if you like what you see, then hit the subscribe button. I always appreciate it. So thanks for watching.